In today's video, I'm going to show you the keyword strategy that I plan to use to get to 1 million visitors per year on this website. So chipperbirds.com, the brand, the myth, the legend is now up to 84,000 visitors per month. If we get it to 86,000, and we times that by 12 across a year, we're going to be hitting over 1 million visitors per year. Having said that, it could just as easily tank, right? And no one knows what the long-term risks of using AI content are. So it could easily go both ways. I'm not naive to that. And this is just a case study that is for fun. But today I'm gonna to show you the keyword strategy that's gonna help me find more keywords. In a situation where we have tons of keywords we're already ranking for, we've gone through most of the obvious ones and it's time to get a bit more creative. So if you wanna learn how to find better keywords, lower competition ones that you can easily rank for, and this keyword strategy has served me well. It's helped me 5x my traffic already in just a short period of time. So make sure you keep watching and let's get into it. All right, all right, all right. So it has been one month since we did the 1,000 blogs published with auto blogging AI. And I thought I'd check back in and see where we're up to. So when we look at the charts, it's pretty crazy so far. And you can see that the traffic for this site is at an all time high. It's increased by 30,000 organic traffic, organic keywords up. Backlinks have also helped, which is awesome. And when I first did this, I was thinking the same as this YouTube comment here, right? This has never been done before. I figured let's just see what happens, but there's a high chance that the website could tank or it gets hit with a penalty or the content gets marked as spam. So I was 100% expecting the site to be considered spammy. But one month later, the traffic is up a crazy amount. Now, this is good and it's bad. And obviously, you know why it's good. So I'm not going to go on about that. But let's talk about why it's bad. The biggest problem is that I have so many keywords ranking for this website. We've got 1,400 pages indexed for this particular site. It's actually becoming really difficult to manage the keywords. Now, I've actually tried doing some keyword research through ChatGPT 16K, and even with ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo 16K, what a name, the new update that handles a lot more tokens. Well, even with that, it's very hard to do keyword research when you've got thousands of keywords and you need to filter through them all. So it's like, okay, well, how can we do this? How can we find more low competition keywords without cannibalizing what we've already got because if we create more pages on the same keywords obviously that's going to hurt our rankings long term because google's not going to know which page to rank and if you're in the same situation and you're creating a ton of content with ai then here's my recommendation find some sub niches related to your main topic that you haven't already covered in much detail on your site so if you've got a thousand or two thousand pages already published on your site like we have for example and you don't want to do all the manual work of checking through the keywords, seeing what's relevant, seeing which pages you haven't cannibalized yet, and you're looking for more keywords, I would just branch off in a sub niche. So for example, if you've got a website that's about birds, well, there are many different types of birds that you could actually go into with a lot more depth that still have tons of volume and less competition. So let me show you how to do that. And you can do this with any tool. It doesn't have to be Hrefs, but Hrefs just it's faster. So I'm going to show you this on the video. But if we type in sub niche of birds, which could be chickens, chickens are still a type of bird, then you can find a ton more opportunities for SEO content that you've probably not covered before. So even if we filter this down to KD10 or less, and even if we say, right, I want DR30s or less ranking in the top five results, there's still going to be a ton of matching questions with low keyword difficulty that have low authority sites ranking in the top five that you can easily rank for. If I zoom out a little bit there, you can see as we scroll down, the world is our oyster when it comes to chickens. So if you're trying to find more sub niches and you've got thousands of keywords and you're not sure what to go for, just pick a relevant sub niche and you want to keep publishing more content, but you don't want to cannibalize, just pick a relevant sub niche that you've not covered ever before in your content. For example, if I type in chip of birds, and then I type in entitled chicken. There's only two pages across the whole site that actually have content related to that topic. So you could just replace site colon with your site. And then if you're looking for new keywords to cover that are relevant to your sub niche, just type in entitled colon and then the keyword right here and just see, have you covered that content before? And if not, that's an opportunity for you to start creating more content 
and then finding more keywords that you can rank for, but you haven't covered before. And this is how to avoid keyword cannibalization. I actually asked some of the top people that I know in SEO for easy ways to handle this many keywords. I've not really seen any. I mean, you can use Rank Tracker, but it's quite often not up to date and it doesn't really help you filter by duplicates. So I can't see any way around this. And if you plug all of these into ChatGPT 16K and ask it to filter the duplicates or find new opportunities, it's still too many tokens for ChatGPT 16K to handle. So once you've found your sub niche and you've found a bunch of new keywords like this, you can export it, open up a new tab, import that list of keywords right here. And the other good thing about this approach is that when you just focus on one specific sub niche, for example, chickens, and you do like a thousand blogs related around that, then you're building up your top authority around this category. Because if you had a hundred keywords around ducks and then a hundred keywords around pigeons and then maybe 30 around chickens, you wouldn't have the same level of authority compared to when you just create content around one semantically related term, chickens, if that makes sense. However, there's still a bit of filtering to be done because some of these keywords are going to overlap. For example, if you look at rows four and five and you compare what sound do chickens make versus what sounds do chickens make, well, it's basically the same search intent. So we have to make sure that we remove any duplicates for search intent and you could do that manually, but it's going to take you all day with a list of a thousand keywords. So how can you quickly do this? So I've tried 3.516 gigs. I thought that'd be great for it. It's not actually smart enough to do this for you. So we're going to use chat GPT four instead, and we're going to automate it as much as we can. Now it's still going to be difficult, but here we go. So we're going to use this prompt to clean this list of SEO keywords up for my birds website, and you can replace that with your niche and then remove anything that's unethical for chickens. So if you have any keywords that probably won't match theme of your site. For example, this site is about protecting chickens that you would remove anything that's unethical or goes against the core values of that website. And then just make sure that ChatGPT doesn't start making up keywords and remove and filter any irrelevant or duplicate keywords, remove anything negative, meat, eat, etc. Because for example, on a site about birds, well, you wouldn't want anything that harms birds and then remove anything with the same search intent. Now from here, we can just insert the keywords. And we're just going to do 200 at a time. Why 200? Because there's a limit on the number of tokens we can actually use for this. And now that's going to give us a list of the relevant keywords that we should cover on our site. Now, chances are you're probably still going to need to give this a quick proofread before you start creating content, because there's going to be some keywords that slip through the gaps or you haven't thought about it in the prompt, etc. But as a starting point, this is an easy way to do it and it's going to save you a bit of time. Sometimes you have to click continue generating like that. And then it's going to tell you I've removed the duplicates, irrelevant keywords and anything that is negative or relate to harming chickens. And if we take those keywords, we'll paste them into a finalized sheet over here. So these are the original keywords and there's 200 of them on that list. Now there's 97. So what's interesting is that about 50% of the keywords you originally find might get filtered down. So we may end up with a list of 500 keywords, not 1000 by the end of this. And then if you're doing this yourself, you can just highlight the ones you already covered in green. So you know that you don't need to copy and paste them into chat GPT again. So let's take the next list of keywords. I would paste in the prompt every time simply because chat GPT forgets. It's like Chinese whispers with chat GPT, where if you just ask it to go again, after five times of doing that, it doesn't even know what you're talking about anymore. And it's just doing its own thing. And as you can see, stuff like how long are rotisserie chickens good for, which is a keyword around eating chickens. Well, that's been removed from this list automatically. So it really does filter out a lot of the crap, excuse my French, that you don't want to include in your content, in your keywords. And it's just way better at filtering. So we're going to take the next 500. And if you've got a list of 1000 keywords, you only have to copy and paste this twice. It only takes a few minutes. And what was once a job that took a whole day, you can now do in the space 10 to 20 minutes. So we'll get the next list like this. And one thing I'd always recommend is trying to do your keyword research in bulk because it should be like a one time job you do every so often so that you can batch all of this for productivity, because if you try and do this every single day or every single week, it's going to get time consuming. It's going to take you from the other tasks and it's better to just do this all in bulk, get it all right at once. And then you set up for a few months, right? You can just do this task once a month rather than every week. And that way you're more efficient. You save time 
and you get it out of the way so that you can focus on other stuff and it doesn't take up your mental energy. There's going to be some other stuff as well that doesn't quite make sense. So you do need to manually check this yourself, but this should be way faster once you've put it through ChatGPT. For example, this keyword around Sims 4, well, that's just a video game. It's not really relevant to my audience or the topics that I'm talking about. So obviously we're going to filter stuff like that out along the way. And you'll probably get some ideas that will improve your prompt too. So to improve my prompt, I should probably add remove anything related to video games. And therefore, next time I do this, we'll have a better prompt that filters out the keywords even better than it did before. So we're on to the final run now. And whilst we're waiting for that, let's see if we need to delete any other keywords from this list. So I'm just going to scroll down and have a quick sanity check. But for example, like how to get chickens in Raid Shadow Legends. That's not good. And let me just quickly search for anything related to Sims as well. And we're gradually getting there. So now we have 610 keywords in total. And so there we go. So we've gone from 931 keywords over here down to 611. So that means typically after the first wave of filtering, you're going to have about 65% of your keywords left but you've got rid of most of the duplicates, most of the irrelevant stuff or anything that could hurt your site's reputation. And now it's time to start pumping out more AI content. And this is basically how we're gonna take this site to six figures in traffic. So you can see with this level of traffic, we're almost up to a million visitors per year if it continues like this. So right now is at 82,000 traffic per month. If we continue like this on this trend, then hopefully we can get to six figures traffic per month, which means more money, more revenue more profit for this AI site. One of the other craziest things I wanted to show you as well is that when I abandoned this site, even though it had human written content on there, it didn't get any Google love. So you can see here, started the site up here, the traffic started flying. And then as soon as we stopped working on the site, the traffic was going down to basically zero. And then as soon as we started creating AI content on the site, it peaked back up to an all time record high of 83K per month. The lesson from that is, AI content has actually saved this site. And when it had human written content, it didn't get any Google love. So interesting case study there. Let's see where it goes. Going to do another video on creating content at bulk in the future. And let's keep it moving, people. So I'm going to include the prompt and the tutorial from today's lesson in my free ChatGPT SEO course. You can get it in the comment section. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more updates on this case study and see where it goes. Hopefully we can get it to six figures in traffic. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.